Okay. Good afternoon. Well, good evening, everybody. How are you? I hope um, uh, you've been enjoying the broadcast. As David said, I've been a regular presenter for him going back to some of his earliest work. And um, I, I am always pleased that he asked me to come back because, you know, every time I do a presentation uh, or any sort of discussion on the markets, my content will polarize some people. And uh, it takes a tremendous amount of courage for uh, David, in my opinion, to keep asking me to come back when he knows he, he might lose customers from me doing my presentations. So if you're one of those guys that uh, might not like what you hear, that's okay. Maybe you'll come back. Uh, for those of you that are really trying to learn how to do this and have been spending all this time and effort in education, training, research, seminars, broadcasts, online webinars like this one, I'm, I'm going to share some things with you that uh, may resonate with you, may not, but I would encourage you to consider it anyway. And uh, let's see if we can't make a real serious dent in the real problems that you have. Because I tend to focus on the psychology of trading more than anything else. I really believe this, that trading really isn't about the markets. It has almost, the markets, in fact, are incidental to trading. Uh, trading is a lot more than that and involves many different disciplines all operating together, which most of us are ignorant of when we first start trading. So we're going to take a little bit of a minute on that. And then I'm going to go ahead and show you what I see different. So to get started, uh, guys, this is going to be my no presentation presentation on how to stop BSing yourself and start winning for a change. And now that may sound like a strong statement, but I'm going to share something with you. So while we're getting started, just in case uh, we don't know the age or temperament or background of anybody participating, want to make sure that everybody knows this. I'm sure you do, but just in case. Trading involves risk. There's there's always a possibility you could lose money. Uh, trading in off-exchange, foreign exchange, uh, futures, options, all of this involves risk of loss. You can lose money. People can and do lose money. In rare cases, some people might lose more than they initially invest. Uh, you really need to carefully consider if trading is right for you in light of your tolerance for risk and your financial position. Everything we talk about in here is really considered opinion. Uh, we're not giving financial advice. Uh, this is all subject to change at any time. So let's go ahead and get started. Now that the regulators are happy, uh, first thing is, who is this guy? I know there's people listening that have never heard me speak before. So I want to go ahead and lay the groundwork for who I am so you can understand what I'm sharing with you has value. The first thing, I've been trading a long time. I've been trading longer than some of my clients and some of my, my students have been alive. I've been trading for almost 40 years. I started as a customer, just like you. 1986, I did my very first trade in Chicago Board of Trade, Big Board Corn, 5,000 bushel contracts, 1986, uh, prior to the big drought in 88. Uh, so I've been trading for some period of time. I've made and lost uh, seven figures more than once, several times. Uh, ashamed to admit that, but at the same time, could not have learned what I learned without those losses. Um, Self-taught, self-educated. In other words, I had this, what you have kit for free right now, what you can get for free on the internet right now, totally dwarfs what I had to spend money on to get educated in the 80s and 90s. There was no internet, there was no cell phones, there was no email, it, you know, barely had beepers. For those of you that might remember back that far. And if I wanted to learn something, I had to dig through libraries. I had to go to uh, bookstores. I had to uh, uh, write down the names of publishers and ask for lists of other, other books that they had on trading. Uh, I had to go track down people. Actually, one of the guys I tracked down was George Lane, who's the inventor of stochastics at the Board of Trade. Turns out his, his office was a couple of floors up and a few doors over. So I went over and knocked on his door and said, George, what is stochastics all about? And he was kind enough to sit down with me in his office and share with me the theory and understanding behind the technical analysis that's become known as stochastics. So I've had to learn things the hard way. And I quit count. I probably spent a hundred grand or more. I don't know. I quit counting at around 50 or 60. So how much money I spent trying to get educated. And then I had my epiphany of understanding and I realized that all that was just basically uh, uh, not useful at all, uh, which some of you are coming to that conclusion now. And I'm going to share with you things as to why that is. A couple of things you need to know, though. Um, 
I'm a published author. I have four market related titles. I'll be happy to send you the titles and links to how to find them. Uh, some are published by Wiley and Sons. Others are self-published. Uh, I developed several manual and automated trading systems over the years. I still use an automated system of my own design for my uh, entries. And uh, the important thing you understand about that is that automating a trading approach is useless unless you know what the theory is behind that trading approach and you have vetted it in real time. So be very careful about using an automated system if it comes from somebody else, because you don't necessarily know what that person is thinking or how they arrived at the conclusion that this trading system is of value. Uh, I did mine, automated my trading signals by actually using them in real time, and I still use them every day. Um, mentored hundreds of full-time traders from around the globe, including people who are running hedge funds and including people that are well, you would be considered more successful than than most people. One of the students that I had was uh, uh, on the board of directors for Delta Airlines. And I also had a student who, like I said, was a full-time hedge trader. Uh, and I also had a student who was, well, I won't tell you the country, but he was the, ministry of, the minister of finance at the time for that country. So what I want to tell you basically is this. Here's the bottom line to what I'm going to share with you. What I have is heavily vetted. I know what works and I know what doesn't. You have the opportunity to make a very real change to your results if you listen starting today. We can open the door together to fixing the problems that you have. You don't even know what you have as problems that will solve your loss problem. At, the problem that you have, which is losing money, we can solve that if you want to. So ignore what I have to say at your peril. So I'm going to go show you something today. We're going to take two more minutes and set the ground rules, and then I'm going to open the door to questions on anything that I can help you with. First thing, there are things that are true about the markets, Forex, futures, and options, that are very uncomfortable for some traders to accept or understand. I don't expect you to, what I share with you in the next few minutes, I don't expect you to just swallow this hook, line, and sinker. I'm expecting you to be uncomfortable because the fact of the matter is this is exactly what the issue is. Number one, 85% of everyone trading is losing and will close their account at a net loss. That includes you. If you're one of those guys that have been trading, I don't care how long you've been trading, but your account, the amount of money you have spent on education and training, the amount of money you've lost in the markets, the number of accounts you've closed at a loss, you add it all up. If you are behind, that's normal. 85% of people trading are going to be behind on all of it. Now, that may sound a little disappointing, maybe disillusioning, but the fact of the matter is that is not my opinion. That comes from the regulators and the people who keep track of those stats, which are clearing members and other traders. And I tell you that everyone is losing. Anybody out there um, know who Bill Ackman is? You guys know who Bill Ackman is? He's a billionaire, right? Everybody thinks he knows what he's talking about. Well, he lost money from 2016 to 2021. His average rate of return on the Pershing Fund from 2002 to 2023 is 7.9%. 7.9%. In the same period of time, 2002 to 2023, the S&P returned 10%. So if you subtract inflation and the devaluing dollar, if you would have invested anything with Bill Ackman over the last 20 years, you would have lost money, mostly. Most likely you would have lost money. Or your rate of return would have been no better than putting in a T-bond or a T-bill. Is that what you're in this business for? And he's a billionaire, so he knows what he's talking about, right? You guys probably know who Mark Cuban is. Mark Cuban thinks Bitcoin is bullshit. And guess who else thinks Bitcoin is bullshit? Bill Ackman. Do you know who's responsible for creating more billionaires in the last 15 years than any other investment ever known in recorded history? Bigger than Microsoft's launch, bigger than Google launch, bigger than HP. Pick something. You know, it's, really, it's made more billionaires out of nobodies in the last 15 years. 
Bitcoin. But Bill Ackman says, that's a waste of your time. And so does Mark Cuban. So what am I trying to tell you? You think people that know what they're doing are out there? Wrong. Nobody does. They're all doing the same thing, just like you are right now. And nobody has a clue how the money's made. They don't. But some of them tell you they do, and they sound like they do, and boy, can they make a convincing argument. It's impossible to reduce the risk in the markets. If you're trading futures, Forex, or options right now, and you're doing all this chart analysis and study and all kinds of mental gymnastics to reduce the risk, try to make it easier on yourself because you can make money that way, you're lying to yourself. You can't. There's only one risk in trading. Only one risk. And it's there all the time. All the time. And you cannot reduce it. You cannot change it. You cannot eliminate it. Winners in the marketplace focus on different things than the losers do. Winners adapt to those changes. So if 85% of people are losing and have been losing since the dawn of time, when markets were first created in the 1850s, Board of Trade was licensed to trade in the 1850s. First soybean, or first contract was, was uh, uh, corn and wheat. Mark Twain traded at the Chicago Board of Trade grain markets. Bet you didn't know that. The risk of trading then is the same as risk of trading now. Nothing has changed. Nothing. Not a thing. Not a thing has changed. So where do the 18% or the 15% come from that are winning? What are winners focusing on that are different than the losers are? You will never make those needed changes without help. Now, the thing that's important for you to understand, if you want to make those changes, I applaud you. If you say you're willing to look yourself in the mirror and go, you know what? I've been trading for 10 years, and all I've been got uh, from all of the effort, time, and money I've spent is I've gotten sold a bill of goods. I'm making nothing. There's got to be a better way. What is it? If you said that to yourself right now, you're never going to be able to make those changes without help. Because if you knew what those changes are, you would have already made them. You don't know what they are. That's the real problem. You don't know what they are. I can show you what they are. But then the big question is, are you going to accept that choice? So here's the good news, though. The problem is everybody's losing for the most part. They're all doing the same thing. They're charting their way to the futility, but they think that's the right way. They think they're going to reduce the risk by doing that, but they can't. Even the smartest guys in the room don't know what they're doing. But the winners know something that's different, and they focus on that, and they make those changes. And the thing is, they'll be the first to tell you, I never knew that was what was wrong until I had that shown to me. So that's the good news. What's that? I'm going to show you the beginning point to leaving this past behind and becoming the trader with the results you've always wanted to be. I'm going to show you what that is right now. And let's get started. First of all, I'm going to put up my chart. And this is the same chart that I use to trade with my account every day. I want you to notice there's nothing on the chart. I left the moving averages on here because I wanted you to all feel like you had some connection to what I'm doing here. But I'm going to show you right now that it's not what you think it is. So let's open the floor. What is it that's on your mind? T.D. Downey says, there were meetings in Chicago and hotels back around the 90s. I don't know what that's about. Uh, M.W. says, Bitkin. Bitkin what? I don't know what he's talking about there. Bayview Trading says, good evening, Jason. Long time. Glad to hear you. Hey, Jerry. That's a guy I haven't seen in a while. Hey, Jerry, how you doing? Are you back online? Are you trading? Are you still living in uh, Mexico? What's going on with you? Uh, feel free to type your comments in here. I'm just going to go ahead and show you a few things here. Okay. <clears throat> what is it that we're all trying to do? Let's go ahead and just ask ourselves a question. What are we trying to do? Why are we doing this? Why do we get up every day and bang our head against this brick wall and, and sit here in frustration and anger and, and heartache? Why do we do that every day? Why do we do that? Anybody want to answer that question? Nobody's talking. Okay. <laughs> All right. How about to make money? Right? How do we make money? How do we make money in the market? Somebody answer that. How do you make money? You got to buy low and sell high. In futures, forex, and options, you can sell high and buy low. 
and accomplish the same end. So you can short the market and make money. You can buy the market, go long, and make money. When I found that out, it was like going from shots of Jägermeister to mainlining heroin. You're kidding me. It doesn't matter which way the market goes. I can make money. That's what I want to do. But then, from 1986 till the early 90s, I got my butt kicked trying to do that, to buy low and sell high. I got my, I just got, I lost money on paper every year. It was horrible. To the very brink of desperation. And I write about that in my second book, The Art of the Trade. Why? Why? How come this is so difficult? What do you, buy low, sell high? Why is that so hard? Look at this. Here's a low price. Why didn't I buy there? Here's a high price. Why didn't I sell there? Because at the time it's happening, we don't know if it's a low or high. And so this is where all this permutations of crap floating around there out there says this is what you got to do. You got to use this indicator, that oscillator, this system, that theory. None of that matters. Let me just explain to you what a winner does. Because you're, you're gonna, it's going to be so simple, it's going to go right past almost every one of you. The winner tries to buy when the losing trader is selling. The winning trader tries to sell when the losing trader is buying. And the reason that's happening is because the marketplace is something called a zero-sum transaction. In order to participate, somebody has to let you in. If you want to be a buyer in the market, it doesn't matter at what price point you want to be a buyer, someone has to sell it to you. If you want to be a seller, someone has to buy it from you. So in order to get positioned in any place in the market, it doesn't matter what the price level is. Let's look at this price chart of Japanese yen over the past three and a half weeks on an hourly time frame, it doesn't matter what price point you would have decided to buy or sell. The bottom line is somebody had to see it opposite of you. So what does that mean? That means that we have a problem with something called shared data. All the information is the same. If you look at all of the data on the screen, the open, high, low, close, if you look at your price chart on your screen, it's going to look the same. If somebody in Mumbai, India, looks at his price chart, it looks identical. The open, high, low, close is going to be the same. Somebody in Alaska or Soviet Union or pitching his tent somewhere in the Brazilian rainforest, connected by Elon Musk's smartphone satellite, it's going to look just like this. Everybody knows what all the reports are. Anytime anybody wants, you can go to forexfactory.com and look at every single report that's ever been produced on the dollar-yen relationship in the past 10 years. Everybody has access to all the same information everybody else has. So why is it that someone looks at the price chart and says it's time to buy, and somebody else looks at it and says it's time to sell? That's because two different points of view exist all the time in the markets. It doesn't matter what it is. There's always somebody looking at something going, you know, that's a bullish opportunity. And somebody else is saying, that's a bearish opportunity. But the reason 85% of people lose all the time is because they're all looking at the same information and being taught the same thing all the way, the same way. For example, a few years back, I went to a weekend retreat seminar taught by heavily vetted traders working for the Online Trading Academy. So me and a few hundred other people all sat in a room together, and we were taught what the Online Trading Academy had to teach. And they were very proud to say that they had helped over 300,000 traders with their coursework. Really? So that means every time the moving average crosses over and you get a touch of the moving average, 300,000 people are all going to be doing the same thing. And those people are all losing, which tells me 
that if I want to win, whatever the online trading academy is telling me to do, I need to really do the exact opposite at some point. And that's exactly what the winners do. And like I said, if you're not careful, it's going to slip right by you. The winner does something different than the loser. And it works like this. The loser studies the market. The winners watch the losers. So when the loser says, wow, that's time to buy, he's buying for a lot of reasons that have nothing to do with the underlying potential in the market. He's buying that market because it has had some technical indicator that appeals to him. It's easy to understand. He's doing that along with everybody else. He's in some chat room where everybody agree. Uh, he's also waited for confirmation. Uh, so the market's already moving in a direction he intends it to profit in. All of this is happening at one time, and this is happening on a time frame that's lower. And that means the winner is just saying, okay, so if he's buying, it's time for me to sell. And if he's selling, it's time for me to buy. So on this time frame, as the market crosses this way and the low move, slow moving average is over here and the fast moving average is over here, and the market's making low day, 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 day. And then there's a big sell-off here. It's high volume, by the way. The loser says, okay, this week is a selling week. I'm going to sell every up move possible because that reduces my risk. So he's selling here as it touches the average. Gets his ass kicked here, but that's fine. Sells it here as it crosses through the moving average. And then makes a move down to a new low for the day. So he's selling it because that's a breakout. And then, of course, the higher it goes, the more he sells it until finally he can't handle the heat anymore and he quits. And then that's the top. And why is that a top? Well, because you have to understand the concept of order flow. The only reason the prices move is because someone decides to buy and someone decides to sell and those orders meet inside the machine, which is the market. So as long as the orders are larger on the buy side than they are on the sell side, the market will rise in price. But since the losing trader isn't monitoring the size of bids and offers, he's monitoring the actual price of trades. He doesn't understand that what's going on behind the price is more significant. So the higher the market goes after selling off, that's a better sell opportunity because he's reducing the risk. And the market continues to climb against him. This, and then you, if you're honest with yourself, honest with me and honest with yourself, you'll know you've done this where markets sold off, convinced you it's a sell, and then the higher it goes, you keep selling into it until you get your head kicked in. Can't figure out what we're wrong. All the indicators said this, so-and-so said that. All the news was bearish. What happened? Well, what happened is, is the order flow was bid. You didn't know that. So when the order flow is imbalanced, and I talk about this in my, my book, Time Compression Trading and the Psychology of Trading, when the order flow goes into an imbalanced state, that's normal. So you want to participate with that. So you wait for that to happen. And then you join the party on that side. And you just simply wait. So once you get long, you wait. And you do nothing. And as long as the market keeps making higher highs and higher lows, you do nothing. When it stops making higher highs and starts moving sideways, like Yen has right here, this is called a range. And what does that mean? That means the order flow is temporarily balancing. That means... There's no more advantage on the buy side. The advantage is gone. So if you're long and you have a profit, it's time to get out. If you're now waiting for the next opportunity, here's what you need to know. 66% of the time, when a market goes into range, it reverses direction. So if you've been long up to a point where the market goes no range, there's a two to one, three to one probability you're going to see a sell-off. So what would you do in a sideways market when it reaches a high print? You'd sell. So you'd be a seller in Japanese yen somewhere up here. In fact, if you were really paying attention, you'd be a seller right about here. And I'll go right about there. That would be where you'd be a seller. So you had uh, one chance here, two chances there, close on the open this week, eh, a little aggressive. Haven't had a next chance, but you could go ahead and sell it here. Now, what we teach in Net Winning Trader is that if you're going to sell right here, what do you do? You put your stop out of range. Why would your stop be up here? 
because the market can't get there. It ran out of buyers. If it ran out of buyers, then there's no push to get it up into this price area. So if you sold 151.60s, let's say 158, what are we at right now? 151.60s, right now, sold it right now, you put your stop at 152 or 152.20. And some people say, well, that's too far because then I would have to take a big risk. No, you trade smaller. Don't leverage. Part of the reason why people are losers is because they leverage. They have a $10,000 account and they do $100,000 positions. So a 20 point move against them, they take a 4% whack on their, on their equity. What the hell? Can't do that. What I teach in the net winning trader environment is how we're going to work the probabilities that the winners work on. The probabilities are they're going to make more money than they lose on the winners than you give back on the losers as long as you know what that ratio is and you stay focused on that ratio and trade based on that ratio. Over 100 trades, you'll have a profit. And here's how simple it really is. If you make 52% winning trades, which is no better than flipping a coin. If you take 100 trades and you have 52 winners, that's random distribution of a coin flip. Did you know that? So forget all about this market study, and I'm going to use this RSI this and this Bollinger Bands that and all that crap. Just flip a coin every day at 8 o'clock in the morning, and if it's heads, go long, and if it's tails, go short. If you did that at the end of 100 trades, which would be what? Roughly one quarter of trading, you'd have 100 trades with about 52% winners to 48% losers. Now, I'm not saying it'll be always 52% winners. What I'm saying is your coin flips will fit that random distribution across the bell curve. So you might have 50% winners, 50% losers. You might have 48% winners, 52% losers. Doesn't matter. Let's go ahead and do the numbers. So if you had 48% winners times 2% gain per winner, you'd make 96% on your equity. But let's subtract out the 1% we lose on the losers. So we have 52 losers at 1% each is 52%. So we have 96% gain on our winners, subtracting 52% losses is a net gain of 46%. Is that right? Everybody got that? Who out there is making 46% a month, or, or I'm sorry, a quarter, on their equity, which equates to about 200% a year. I teach my people to make 100% on their equity every year as being reasonable. If you're not trying to make 100 to 150% or more on your equity every year, why are you doing this? Because you want to be Bill Ackman? Well, you need to look at yourself really hardcore in the mirror. Why are you doing this? You're doing this to get rich. If you knew what the loser was doing and took the other side, if you knew how to see that, you might do better than 52% winners. But even if you did, chance, but learned how to hold your winning trades to pay you 2%, for every 1% you give back on your losers, you could easily earn a rate of return that would double your money every year. That's just the mathematics and numbers behind that. So if you aren't doing that, you have to ask yourself, why is that? Why am I not doubling my money every year based on all this information that I'm hearing and learning through attending things like Timing Research Show? Now, I'm not saying that people that are teaching you stuff here are bad. I'm just saying there's a better way if you know how to look for it. So let's take a look at what we've got here for notes and let's see if the hate mail is here yet baby trading says long story let's call and catch up anytime you want okay 
T. Downey says they're all bankrupt and where they ran out of business. Don't know what he means there. Diamond statement number one, over leveraged. Right. Some people do over leverage. We got to stop that. We teach you in, in not, net winning trader not to do that. To start small and stay small because when you start seeing how this really works, you don't need to leverage. You don't. You don't need to leverage. Imagine having a 60 or 65% winning trade to losing trade ratio. That's wonderful. But what if you could take 3% out for every dollar you get back or 4%? You don't need to leverage. You really don't. So what would be the clues that it's time to buy down here? I'm just going to go ahead and give you some insight as to why this concept works. Okay, first of all, the market is selling off consistently, selling off, selling off. So let's assume one thing. What do we know about a market that's under downtrend? At some point, this is going to end. That's what we know. So we're looking for clues that a downtrend has ended if we want to buy. We don't buy until we see the clues. Does that make sense? Right. So what are the clues? Low print. Followed by a higher low. Followed by a lower low. Whoa. That didn't happen. Three tries for a bottom. Fourth try right here. So wait a minute. Every time it made a move lower, we had a low print, followed by a lower high, followed by a newer low. Lower high, new lows. This just kept happening. Right here. Oh, it tried to make a low. Didn't happen. Tried to make a high. Didn't make a new high. Then it sold off hardcore. And it did it again. New high, nope. New low, nope. Wait, new low, nope. New low, nope. Wait a minute. This high is higher than the previous highs. Okay, so right here is your big clue. Oops. Well, come on, man. It's a freaking thing. Come on, freaking! Oh, I hate. To, you know, are, are any of you guys out there fans of computers? I mean, do you like like computers? I would like to. I wish we could go back to using abacuses and charcoal pencils, but that's me. All right, right here. This is a big clue. Price closes at a high print higher than the previous highs that were seen on tries for lows. So your low print right here, these lows, indicate the buyers are interested. Why is that? No trade down here. Then we make a move higher here, and this high is higher than the previous highs. So this is a clue, and this is a clue. All right, well, let's suppose, hypothetically, that these clues suggest that the market's run out of selling pressure and it's about ready to turn bid. Do we know that? Anybody willing to step up and say, do we know that? Anybody say, do we know that? Who, who's willing to go on record and tell me what they're really thinking here? Here's the market that comes down to a low print and dies. And then has a clue, closes on an hourly basis, closes at a higher print. Do we know that? What do we know is going to happen right here? Bayview Trading says, yes, we know that. Okay, well, we don't know that. We suspect that. I was hoping you'd throw the word in there, suspect. Remember from our training, we talk about probabilities. Part of what we learn is to, to, to modify the way we talk to each other. What do we talk to? What? How do we talk to our inner voice? Our inner voice is what? Probabilities. We don't know for certain. We have to look for probabilities. So it might do this. It could do that. Maybe. Possibly. Those are the words that we change from the market must do. It could do. It should do. Right? Remember those? That training that we had, Jerry? We talked about those things? Right. Good. Okay. He says that I call that a slip bar. Okay. All right. So the point is, there's clues. We don't know. We do not know. We will never know. Jesus Christ doesn't know what the markets are going to do tomorrow. Stop trying to figure it out. You're never going to know. 
All you're going to be able to do is look at probabilities. If the probabilities are there, roll with it. If they're not there, make sure your risk is reasonable. So what do I teach a net winning trader? You take a 1% risk on your equity. That's it. You don't leverage. Once the trade is on, if it's working, don't touch it. So what would happen here if we were to buy this low print? Okay, well, let's draw a trend line and find out. Well, what would be the clue that an uptrend is happening? Higher highs, higher lows. So here's the lowest low. And here's another low that's not quite so low. So, okay, so maybe right along here is possibly our uptrend. We don't know, but we're hoping, right? Do we have any other clues? Sure. Fast moving average, which in this case is the 50 bar. 50 bar moving average went north right along the rail. 100 bar did the same thing. Well, that trend line might be happening okay so now we try for a low print right here doesn't happen another high higher low not higher high Ooh, this could be bad but wait a minute are we in yet no we're just looking we're just watching market comes down to a higher low doesn't do it doesn't do it doesn't do it stalls look at this comes right down to our trend line under our 50 bar but holds the 100 bar and then rockets up to make a new high on the same bar followed by a higher high and a bunch of them sell off to a higher low followed by a higher high we're under uptrend this would have been your buy point right here this is what we teach in net winning trader this would have been your buy point right there edit buy Right, right here. Why? Why would you buy right there? Because the market's making higher highs and higher lows, and it touched the trend line that it said might happen along that line. So it worked. Okay, so this is one trade that worked. So now, where are you at? You're long right along here somewhere. Let's call it 147.60. You're long at 147.60, and guess what? You're still long at 5160. So you're up 400 points in a week and a half. Now, why are you still long? Because in, in Net Winning Trader, we tell you to move your stop to the point where the market has already proven it's not willing to go to. So it would be where? Somewhere under the 50 bar, somewhere under the 100 bar, or somewhere under your trend line. If this uptrend is still valid, which we don't know if it is or not, it could be a top. In fact, there's a really strong probability this is a top, but that's not the point. The point is you're long from a price point. You got 400 points in it. What do you do? Well, you got to protect some of that. But what if this is on its way to a brand new all time fresh high that never been seen before in the yen ever 199? Great. Do you want to stay with it? It's your call. You decide. If you're saying, I don't know, I've never made 400 points in my life on a trade. Great. Get out now. Sit on your sidelines and wait. See, there's no wrong or right way to trade. One of the things we teach at Net Winning Trader is you can do this any way you want. Just follow the rules. The rules are you don't risk more than 1% on a trade. You, you got to make at least twice that every time. You want to focus on increasing the amount of time you hold winners. How you pick your, your trades to enter is less important than how you get out. We focus on the exit strategy as being the single most important thing. And what is it that everybody else does? Everybody else focuses on how they get in, right? That doesn't matter. Does, how you get in does not matter. What matters is if you're wrong, you get out. If you're right, you stay in. So you have to have a program for that. If you are smart enough to figure out that there's a way to exploit the losing trader well enough so you can get 55, 58, 60% or more winning trades and hold them for two, three, or four times more money than you lose, that's really, now you're really laying it away. And what the winning trader does 
is different than what the losing trader does. That's the difference right there. It's really that simple. And you know why most people don't want to appropriate it? Because they don't want to have to admit that they spent 60 to 80 to 100 grand in BS to get to that point, like I did. They don't want to have to admit that. Well, if you're willing to admit that, then I've got some help for you. Okay, now, a couple of questions here. Tony's son, LOL. <laughs> uh online trading academy yeah well that, that's hey listen you you know how you can make a million dollars in this business without even working tell people how to make a million dollars in this business without working that's all you gotta do mark wants to know what books have you written uh email me i'll show you how to get a hold of me email me i'll send you back a list you can pick and choose or buy them all uh, he says, I uh, keep saying amen. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, let's see. All right. Mark says, cool. No worries. Any other comments or questions? But here's what I'm going to do for you right now. I just want you to understand there's a difference between analyzing the markets and observing the markets. What I want to do is teach you how to just look. The term speculation, for those of you that are unfamiliar with the term, the term speculation, that's what we're doing. We're speculating in the markets, right? The term speculation comes from a Latin root verb that's pronounced speculare. Sounds sexy, right? It means to observe. That's it. It, it implies that you're not making any assessment of conditions, any kind of preconceived ideas or outcomes. Don't They don't matter. We're just watching. It's like watching a football game watching the game not analyzing what every step every player makes and why that's important and who's got how many winning tackles and how many games that end in a y and blah 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 right none of that it's, 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 watching the game speculation means watch all you're doing is watching so we teach you how to just look let's look and observe here's an opportunity okay well that one worked great will the next one work we don't know Maybe it will. Maybe they'll all work. I don't think so. All right. Comments or questions? Floor is open for Q&A because here's what we're going to do. We're just going to take a second now. And uh, I'm going to move back to my screen and do this real quick. Okay. So if your answer is yes, I'm ready to make some changes. I'm tired of getting my head kicked in. I'd like to learn how to make money starting right away. I want you to consider me your friend in the business. I am uh, willing to help you every step of the way. I provide a complete program. It's designed to assist you in making the transformation from losing trader to winning trader. And it is a transformation. It'll change your world if you do it right. If you're ready to open the door to a fresh perspective of thinking and behaving, there's two things you got to change. Your thinking and the way you do this. I can show you what you need to learn. And I'm telling you, winners are doing this differently than losers are. And they're not filling their head or their life or their screens with all this other non-essential stuff. They're really not. So the, the program is going to challenge you to put aside your current method of trader participation. It's going to challenge you to adopt a different method of trader participation. Once you make the change, your results could improve exponentially. So here's the website, netwinningtrader.com. And uh, while you're writing that down, additionally, if you visit the website, you can sign up for a free introductory course that we send you via email. There's a lot, a lot of free stuff that we send you via email, little bits and pieces here and there that I think will make sense to you. It's not the entire program, obviously, because we want you to join as a paid subscriber. Uh, however, to get to that point, you need to see value. And I respect that. So we're willing to put ourselves out there and build some value with you and show you that we really do have a solution to your problem if you want it. So it'll encourage you that you can learn those missing parts. They're there. I'm telling you, whether it's from me or somebody else who thinks just like me, the answer to your problem, what's ever slowing you down, the reason you can't put more money on the table month after month after month, if, if you can't do that, the solution is out there. 
But the problem is you don't know what the problem is. So you don't know what you don't know. And I know that because <laughs> I've been there. And I can tell you that it's a solvable problem. And you could start right now. So last, I'll be happy to answer any questions you've got on this pathway. Just use the contact me form if you want to. Um, netwinningtrader.com. I'm just going to show you this real quick. Let me put it up for you real fast what I do with it. Here it is. Um, whoop, where'd it go? Oh, hold on a minute. I keep forgetting that I got to move it over because I'm on a shared screen thing. It's not letting me do that right now. Uh, why is it not letting me do that right now? Oh, here we go. Oh, no! Oh, son of a gun. Yeah. Sorry, guys. I'm having a hard time with my system. It's not letting me. There we go. Okay. Here's netwinningtrader.com. Just go to netwinningtrader.com. You can contact us means I'll get a copy of it. So we'll, uh, Tony, he'll put you in the database. You'll always get stuff from us. Join the free email training. You'll get stuff from us regularly. We send it out to you. And then here's a complete description. There's my smiling face. You get a complete description of everything we do. It's all right here, along with some questions and answers if you want. Here's how you log in. If you want to become a member, just hit the members area. We have a discount code that's there too. Uh, for those of you that still are not sure but have been listening to me for the last week or two, you know there's a discount code. Um, if it, if you got it and it doesn't work, just tell us and we'll fix that. Uh, so, again, netwinningtrader.com. You can sign up for the details there. Be happy to help you. So we got a few minutes left. Uh, what questions do we have? Now, I don't know how many total listeners we have here today that's another thing that for whatever reason um i never got to see from uh, our host so i don't know how many people are listening and I'm, I'm hoping there's a whole bunch of you guys but if there's only a handful that's fine don't be embarrassed to ask a question if you can't ask a question or you're not sure what to ask you don't want to be out there um you know hanging it out there having the conversation you can send those questions to me anonymously. Just put in, you know, use the contact me form and send them out and I'll be happy to answer them for you. And I just want you guys to know, me and Tony, uh, the guy that I work with, my uh, assistant here, the, the co-producer of all this, we're the real deal. We're trading our own accounts every day. We're not BSing you when it comes to this, guys. I'm telling you. If you're not making the money you know is there to make, there's a solution to that problem. You probably don't know what that solution is. And it wouldn't surprise me if you spent years looking for it because everybody goes through that. But the good news is I've got that solution. I've heavily vetted. I know what the problem you're having is, and I know how to solve that. And I can tell you that every other winner out there is doing something that is very similar in nature or in practice. So we're going to give you those guidelines and those basics, and we're going to show you how to solve this problem. Um, but you got to take a little bit of time and effort on your part too. And if it takes a little bit of extra thinking it through and spending some extra time with me, I'm okay with that. Feel free. So what kind of questions do we got? T. Downey says, good discussion. Thank you. You're welcome. If you go to Net Winning Trader, at the very top it says sign up. So you know where to go, right? Get your checkbook out. Bayview says, as far as value goes, from a former student, J.A.J. is the real deal. And listen, listen to what he says right here. I know Jerry. I haven't talked to Jerry personally in a few years, but I, I work with Jerry directly. Him, He and I did the psychology of trading course together. Look at what he says. I'm still reaping value from his class over 10 years ago. That, that, that Jerry, thank you. And I'll get that. Referral check out to you this week. No, I'm just teasing. You know I didn't do that, right? You know I'm just teasing you. I haven't talked to Jerry in years. I'm sorry, Jerry. I didn't mean to. I appreciate you saying that. <laughs> My pleasure. No check necessary. Any other comments or questions, guys? Listen, you're. I'd be more than happy to answer them. Don't ask the big question. What's the big question? What's the big question? Some clients are out there. I can hear you thinking. 
Tony says, I, I can say Jason revealed the underlying reality and made everything clear for me. Actually, Tony has agreed to do something. This takes some guts, but what he's decided to do is really, really indicative of the confidence level anyone can have with this material. He's trading his own money in real time, and he's documenting everything he's doing. And when he's done 100 trades, which is what we talk about in the program, do 100 trades, look at your results, make the changes you need, move on to the next round of trades, he's going to publish that on YouTube. He's going to publish that, and he's going to say, here's what I did, here's what I learned, here's the mistakes I made, here's my net change in equity, here's what, what it would have been if I would have followed the program and not made the mistakes. In other words, everything that you do in real time, he's doing in real time. And he's going to document it and put it out there and show you that this material is exactly what you need to win. I don't know what more you need from that, so you're welcome to follow along in real time if you want. Tony will have that in the next few weeks probably. He says, use the content right there. Um, and he says, you said there was a discount code. Where do I find it? Tony, what's our current contact? What's our current discount code? I, is it the Lion Online? He says, use the contact us form. Jason forgot we don't have a discount now. Oh, we don't? Okay. Sorry, Tony. I thought we were still offering a little bit of a savings to people that got involved. I guess... Well, we will, I'll, I'll honor it. I don't mind. I don't care. We'll honor it if you want. Do you want to honor that? Uh, he says, sure, we will. Okay. Anybody who wants a discount, we'll give you one right now. So uh, oh, my mistake, I thought we still offered one. Apparently we didn't. Now we do. Might want to take advantage of that if you're serious about getting started. Um, just email Tony. He'll give you a code. He says, I'll set it up afterwards. Okay. Tell you what, let's give everybody 24 hours. So you can set it up and you'll set it up for the code will be the lion online. Okay. That's fine. Jerry says, got to go. Nice to hear your voice again. Talk soon. Anytime. You know how to get a hold of me. Please do. Tony says good till Sunday. Okay. Good till Sunday guys. If you, my gift to you for Easter. Okay. I, he'll set it up. He'll tell you what the discount is. Just use the discount code. He emails you. You're fine. Good till Sunday. Um, Lee says, I'm an NQ futures trader. Can you guys help me consistently be profitable? Absolutely. The, let me mention this to those guys that are on the fence. It doesn't matter what market you trade. If you trade futures, options, cash Forex, Forex futures, cryptocurrencies, or cryptocurrency futures, any market that's a zero-sum transaction market functions the same way. It's the same identical environment. I personally can, I'm telling you, the market itself doesn't matter. The market itself is incidental to the profits. Doesn't, you could round blue bricks or candy coated cockroaches, don't matter. If you are trading a zero sum market, they're all functioning the same way. They're all, the participants are all making the same mistakes the same way. They're all involved in a similar process. All you have to do is know what that process is so you can participate more effectively. So, yes, if you're trading NQ futures, yeah, we can help you. Absolutely. Not a doubt. Tony says, more info on YouTube. What is our YouTube channel, Tony? Can you put that in there? I think it's netwinningtrader.tube or whatever, right? Can you put that in there? Maybe uh, we got one or two guys that want to see that. We got a couple of videos up there. And um, uh, like I said, Tony is putting up a... A proof of concept video for what we do that'll be a few more weeks though um we got another couple of minutes if you want there it is youtube at netwinningtrader.com okay thank you david all right any other comments or questions that you guys want to take a minute on if not you know i think we got like four or five minutes i can give you a big one if you want me to share something with you oh it this one always blows people away if you want me to share one one thing with you we got nobody nobody's down he says sure go ahead thanks okay let me put my chart back up again let me show you this real quick hold on and i try i promise i won't go over okay you're actually the last pre presenter of the day so if you want to take a few extra minutes that's that's fine with me oh okay thank you david 
um let's Go try to it. do that okay all right so here here this is the thing right here that we're we're saying all right this could be an opportunity let's get position blah 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 and then this might be a top we're not sure Okay, I want to show you something. Here's the 60 minute time frame. Let's go down to the five minute time frame. Now, a lot of this is going to go away, but I'm going to draw it all together for you in a minute. All right. So here's the five minute time frame. And all the five minute is getting, I'm going to draw a box around the five minute time frame. This is what the five minute chart is showing you, right? And let's go out to the 60 minute time frame. You see that? Why did I put this up here? If you're looking at the five minute time frame, what are you seeing? Markets moving higher, markets moving lower, markets moving higher, move, move a little bit sideways. Here's your moving averages are all over the place, right? But what you're trading in here what this is right here on a 60 minute time frame this is a very small amount of the actual market presence i want to ask you to change your focus for a minute and listen to me when i tell you about what it's like to play a piece of classical music if you're a conductor and you sit in front of 110 people all with different musical instruments and you're going to play a symphony it's important to remember a few things the person who's listening to this is hearing the sum total of everyone playing they're not listening to just the oboes just the strings just the timpani, just the bass, right? They're listening to the whole thing. Now, I want you to imagine what would happen if you were a conductor and you're going to play a classical piece of music and you took away two-thirds of the instruments that were supposed to play. And then every, of, every instrument that was left would play exactly what it was supposed to play you would hear something completely different. You would hear something that would not even come close to what the actual composer's full rendition would try to tell you or communicate to you. This is the relationship very similar to what low time frames have to high time frames. Low time frame traders Go back to the five minute. Low time frame traders are trading information about the market that high time frame traders are not even considering as significant. Let's go out to the 120. Look at the data on the screen about where really support and resistance might be. And then look at what you're doing up here on the five minute time frame. Let's look at the 180. Even this says this says this uptrend's got more room to go, right? But if we look at the daily time frame, we are up against the yearly highs that attracted a huge amount of selling from the same price area in one day. We haven't seen that yet. On a weekly time frame, we are looking at all-time highs. This is the highest that yen has been at. When the market gets to the highest price that it's been at in 25 years, is this time to buy or is this time to sell? If you're on a five-minute time frame, you'd be looking to buy this market. If you're on a five-minute time frame, this is a totally uptrend buy looking to make a new high. In fact, for those of you do, those of you guys that do hardcore technical analysis, which in my opinion, you might as well throw your money away. You're looking at a rising wedge formation that's about to break out. And do we have any news this week? We got news this week, don't we? What's the news coming out tomorrow, Thursday, Friday? 
what's that news going to be? Is that going to be enough to push it up through that high print and look for stops? Maybe. The five-minute guy thinks that's what's going to happen. Well, guess what? 85% of people trading this business are trading on a time frame of 30 to 60 minutes or less. So everybody's going to be on the buy side, whereas the daily, weekly, or higher time frame is looking for a place to sell. The highest price since, what's on the weekly here? No, the, look at the monthly. The highest price since 1998. In fact, I remember being long in 98. I do. I remember being long in 98. I'm like a tiny little Formica desk in a miserable hole in the wall office in Chicago. Look at this move. One, two, three months later, the market had lost 40% of its value. I mean, are we looking at a similar situation today? Look at where the averages are. Same place. Am I saying you should sell it tomorrow? No, I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is there's a lot of reasons to be cautious on the long side. That's all. Do I have shorts on? Yeah. Put them out last week. Up here. This is where I got short. Right up here. Am I making any money? No. Do I think I will? Yeah. But where's my stop? Out of range. It's up here. If it gets there, so what? I lose a point, 1%. If it works, now what? Where's my exit? Somewhere well under here. Actually, my exit, truth were told, I'm looking for this, 142 to 141. Might take a couple of months to get there. So what? What if it comes down and I roll my stop to break even, then I get whipsawed out? So what? Statistically, as long as you're doing everything according to the probabilities inherent in winning, eventually you'll win. So I want to encourage you guys, don't... What I, what I was trying to show you with this illustration is the relationship between the winning traders and the losing traders. The winning traders focus on things differently. They use larger time frames. They look at different support and resistance levels. The losing trader is trying to, to score on something that he's been told works like you know the rising wedge and the breakouts and the you know all that kind of stuff what would be very very common in a situation like this if we're on a five minute time frame very very common in this situation break out to the upside where the market moves 40 or 50 points stalls reverses sells off 200 points on the day that would be very common I'm not saying that's going to happen. I'm saying if it did, that would make sense to me, right? So I just want to encourage you guys to remember that. Here, let me do this real quick so we're not any more confused than we need to be. Okay. So here we are back at what does this all mean? What I'm trying to help encourage you to remember is that there is no meaning. That None of this means anything. The only meaning there is is whatever meaning you give it inside your own head. So what you want to do is have no meaning, no attachment. It doesn't matter what the markets do. It only matters what I do. What I do is take advantage of better than chance opportunities. If they work, great. I'm looking to make 2 3 4% gain on those trades. If they don't work, I don't want to give back any more than 1% of my equity. Because over 100 trades... I can win on that relationship. So I got to be patient. One or two trades a day. I don't need to spin myself in and out trying to make three pips, four pips, five pips. All that does is increase my potential for loss. I can do this one day at a time for the next 90 days and come very close to a 30, 40, 50% gain on my money. Is that okay? Should be okay. Everybody sitting here, I think, would be okay with that based on the results that you currently have, right? So it's okay. Uh, TD says, uh, 240-minute chart was a breakthrough for me. Good. Excellent. Dow Jones says, thanks for that important reminder. Noise, right? Tony's got a couple of notes in here. Oh, he said this. Uh, we're going to give you 20%. That's ready. 
Would love your feedback about the course too. Okay. Guys, uh, uh, you're, we're giving you 20% to say yes today. Please feel free. If you got any questions, um, let me know. If you want to wait, uh, that's fine. We'll give you till Friday afternoon, or I'm sorry, till Sunday afternoon, Tony said. So it's all good, clean and green. Tony said, did you mention the giveaway? Yes, I did. Uh, if you go to netwinningtrader.com and you sign up for the free email trading course, what we're going to do is send you regular pieces of information via email that are related to our course content. It's obviously not going to be the whole course, but it's going to be information that you can uh, use to help make a choice about whether or not you see value. If you see value and you can apply a handful of those things, great. Maybe that means you'll want to join the family and uh, participate on a full level with us. And again, I'm not asking you to do anything until you're ready, but I would love it if you were ready sooner rather than later because there's no reason why you can't start really putting money on the table tomorrow. I mean, it's a very small change you got to make, but sometimes, you know, seeing that change is a big deal. It looks like it's huge. You know, wow, well, I don't even know what I got to do. Sometimes you need a, a paradigm shift. You know, when I had my paradigm shift, I couldn't sleep for three days. Swear to God. I looked out the window of my apartment going, no way. It's that easy? What was I missing? Why was I listening to this crap all these years? It made a big, I, it was an amazing experience to me. It hit me like a ton of bricks. I never looked back. And I'll be honest, I do have losing days, losing weeks, occasionally a losing month. Very rarely a losing quarter. But I haven't had a losing year in, I don't know, decades. There's no reason why you have to either. I mean, making money at this business is not the goal. The goal is to be on the right side of the order flow. Making money is the result of being on the right side of the order flow. It's like, if you do everything right, money shows up. So concentrate on doing everything right. Don't focus on the money. And little things like that is what we teach in the coursework. So, Okay, Tony says, so profit protocol, what to do with our winning trade per our program? What you do with the winning trade? Nothing. Once it's on, you leave it alone. We teach you to roll stops, to lock in profit and let it roll, and then also when to add to the trade. There are times when adding to the trade is the right thing to do, and we teach you those points and how to recognize them. That doesn't mean you have to do it, uh, but it is an option for you. Uh, the giveaway that we got for the first one that we got given away is the profit protocol guide. Okay, so what, what we're doing on the first email set of instructions, the set when we email you stuff, the first one that we're sending you apparently this week is going to be how to work on the profit protocol. Uh, Downey says, thanks for your time and presentation. I have to check on my wife who came home work under the weather. Okay, I hope she's feeling better. Sorry, I have to bug out. No worries. Come back anytime. Okay. I guess we're good to go. We went a little long, too. I, I know David's uh, got things he's got to do, and he was kind enough to give me a few extra minutes. As always, thanks for having me, guys. I'll let you get back to your evening. David, thanks again for allowing me to present. You know, I, I, I always thank David personally when he lets me present because I know I say things that really fly in the face of a lot of things that he has clients and presenters present. And, you know, we're not trying to hurt anybody's feelings, but at the same time, we're trying to clarify where the money really is. And I think I've got an edge for that. So every now and then, you know, we lose customers over my uh, my uh, presentation. So I hope that wasn't the case today. You know, you know what I mean, David? So, <laughs> yeah, my, my whole, you know, goal with this platform is to uh, to allow people to get exposed to the widest variety of um of thinking about the markets as possible so well, well listen i haven't uh, gotten to the i haven't gotten to the sacrificing babies part but we'll get that <laughs> <later>. yeah <laughs> well you know every, you know whatever works everyone's so siloed into their own uh you know information bubbles these days and you yeah know, in in different ways that uh that I, I try to have a place where people can you know get access to a lot of different types of information well i hope i hope you get 
I hope you get more fan mail than hate mail. I, I try. Yeah. I, I hope that's the case too. And if you can, well, and you want to invite me back, you know, I'll be here. Oh yeah. Always. You're always welcome. So, all right. So uh, yeah, thanks for, thanks for being here. Great my presentation. Pleasure. Great analysis. Well, my pleasure to do it. I'll see you guys next time. In the meantime, uh, be safe. <laughs>